Okay, welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. I am Skix of Skixie's Greater Shows. And we have some very special guests today from Puppets in the City. There's uh, Shelby Rickert and Zombie Cat. If you could introduce yourselves, please. I'm Shelby Rickert, and I am the director of Puppets in the City. And Zombie Cat, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm Zombie Cat. Uh, zombie Cat, could you tell us a bit about how you became a zombie? Well, it's kind of a bad memory, Skicks. I don't know, you know, but I'll uh, I, I'll leave out the gruesome details. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, I used to just be an alley cat, you know, just a just a regular alley cat, and uh, I was walking down the alley, you know, and and I I I tripped over something. I I, I don't know. My cats don't usually trip, but I I, I tripped over a, a, a giant barrel. And then it started rolling, and it rolled right over me. So in that, uh, I, that was the end. And I, uh, I guess, yeah, I woke up like this. So, yeah, that was it. So that that was your ninth life, and you're 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 continuing afterwards. Yeah, I, I thought I had a couple extra still, but no, that was it. That was it. And so now I'm on about my eleventh life. Well, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, now, the uh, theme of the podcast is is really about weirdos. Yeah. Um, cool. How do uh, this is to both of you? How do how do you find um, being a weirdo affects your performance? I think it makes my performance. I think it, that's what you know. If, if I think by being a weirdo, sometimes. Um, it, it, I just think of like just going outside your box a hundred percent, not just a little bit, but a hundred percent, and people go, "Oh, you're really weird." Thank you. That's a compliment, you know. And I think that you can do a lot with any, you know, anything. I think if you go a hundred percent and just sell it, kind of, does that make? Because that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, do you do you find being weird, Zombie Cat? Do you find being weird uh, makes life difficult at all? Not at all. I mean, I, I hang out in the cemetery most of the time, and everybody's weird there. So what? You know, I just I just fit in, cool. and uh, especially on Halloween. Halloween is great because everybody looks like this, and you can just go out and be as weird as you want to be. I think it's interesting that like one day of the year, well, maybe not just one, but especially Halloween, people are so willing to be weird. And then the rest of the time, no. If somebody is doing something like, if we could do trick or treat once a month, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Yeah. But if you show up at some person's house like, in, a, in a Halloween costume in like, oh, I don't know, July, they're gonna think you're weird. But not on October thirty first. I think that's really weird. <laughs> it is. I I kind of agree. I think uh, Halloween is is our time uh, for the weirdos. Yeah. Um, Shelby, have you always been weird? Always. I was raised by two very very silly people, and I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, I was always the weird kid. You know, um, not the popular kid, the weird kid. The, the one that read books instead of, I don't know. We didn't have any electronics back in the Jurassic period when I was a child. But um, yeah, I, you know, instead of going out and playing, I was I was the bookworm and um, I didn't fit in. And for when I was a kid, it was hard. It was really hard. I thought there was like something wrong with me. But now that I got older, and I, what saved me was getting into theater. Because you want, you know, that you were weirdness was welcome in theater. So when I was in high school and I got into theater, suddenly, oh, this is the song of my people. You uh, you mentioned silliness. Do you think silliness is important? Oh, silliness is important because you 
can't be silly. I don't, that being silly is being willing to laugh at yourself. And if you can't do that, you're going to be miserable, I think. And take life so seriously. If things hurt you more, you can't laugh it off a little bit. So yeah, silly, I think silly is a survival tool. Can you tell us a bit more about Puppets in the City? Well, Puppets in the City, we've been together for almost eight years. We've been nonprofit for since 2017. And our philosophy is that everybody has a story to tell and puppets can help you tell that story. So um, puppets are for all ages. And we try to do shows and workshops for all ages and abilities and you know whatever uh, occasions, I guess. But I love it. It's really fun. And um, as I said, I love theater, but I don't like being seen. <laughs> so this is a perfect thing. Puppets are great. You, if you like acting and and things like that, but you have a problem being on stage, you know, most of the time we're off stage. So it works great. And we do, we uh, working with Head Start schools. We're working with um, the, we're gathering senior stories right now for to put into a, a show. And we work with local theater companies like Plan B Theater and you. <laughs> um, so we're trying to do both for kids and for adults, you know, sort of more of a mainstream theater. Um, back east, you'll go see a play like you would here, but it's all puppets, um, beautiful puppets. Um, like, for example, there I saw a, a little clip of Pinocchio, and a, a human actor was Pinocchio, and then they had this gigantic Geppetto that was being worked by a crane. Ooh. It was incredible. So I don't think that Utah has really seen what puppets can do. And that's what that's another part of what we want to do is really show how you can use puppets in just mainstream theater as character extensions, as characters, help tell the plot, um, help uh, uh, sort of do emotions and things like that. It's, it's puppetry is really amazing. I've even seen puppets do stand up comedy. Yes, it's true. It's true. And um, what's that guy's name? Jeff? Uh, Dunham? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and puppets are a, puppets are an old, old art form. They need clear back to the Egyptians, even. So people have always used puppets. There were and, Egyptian puppets? Yeah. They're made of clay. I don't know that I want to try and work on it. Kind of like, that's a heavy puppet. But yeah, I mean, if you, as a kid, if you played with dolls or trucks or anything that you made talk or move, you were doing puppetry. Anything can be a puppet as long as you give it a voice and movement. So um, I think we do puppetry in our lives more than we realize. I think you're probably right. Um, now, Puppets in the City has been in a few Gonzo Rising shows, um, mm -hmm. and last summer we did a dedicated show for their Fringe Fest uh, program. Um, uh, what was that again? It was Le Carnival Toxique. Le Carnival Toxique, um, which was a, a lovely full feature length um, right. program featuring acrobats and uh, <laughs> just all sorts of uh, dance and a lot more intricate movement than you often see with puppets. Which... Right, and there are different kind of puppets than uh, zombie, zombie cat here. Uh, they're ensemble puppets, which is something that they use more in mainstream theater. That is, it's operated by more than one puppeteer. The puppeteers are visible and um, they don't, they can move their mouths, but sometimes they don't. And, um, anyway, but it was, it was a, it was the first time we tried it and it was so much fun. It was really fun. It really was. 
Zombie Cat, do you have any uh, advice you would like to share for people growing up uh, as weirdos? Well, you know, I think sometimes weirdos are even more special because you feel things differently. You know, sometimes you're affected by things and you want to express yourself. But so don't be don't be afraid of doing that. And if you want to do something, don't, you know, like be in a play or uh, maybe like the school talent show or something, do it, just do it. And if people say you're weird, that just means that you're different and different is awesome. Can you imagine if everybody was all the same? That'd be kind of a boring world. So weird people are necessary. And if people say, oh gosh, you're so weird, just say, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I, I believe that in the history of humanity, um, it's generally, most people are fairly similar, and that's kind of how the, the tribe stays together. But I think in order to survive and grow, we, we do need at least a few weird people in our, in our group um, to sort of keep us from stagnating, if nothing else. That's right. And the, and, the, oh, go ahead. the, the weirdos are going to be the artists, the, the creators. Um, That's what I was going to say. Yeah, and, and the people who think about things in a different way. And that includes people with disabilities and, and people who are neurodivergent and people who are LGBT. Um, and, and puppeteers. Yeah. Yeah, we need to think about things more, I think. I think we need to think more and talk less sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, you know, it like, but like what's going on in the world right now is kind of scary, even for me, you know? 
I'm already dead and it's scary. So, and sometimes I think the weirdos, the artists, the, the people that feel deeply uh, are so important to kind of, in a way, sum it up for us so that we can understand it as a human being and not just read it in the news or whatever, you know, that we can understand and make sense of what's going on in our world, uh, uh, you know, as a human or cat. Or an undead cat. Uh, yeah, or an undead cat. Um, and another thing I, I've uh, noticed about your, your troupe is that you often invite people in to uh, to perform that aren't necessarily seasoned puppeteers. You, you seem very inviting. Yeah, and we'll train you. What's that? There's a real cat here. Oh. Hey, you're not in the interview. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. We we always need puppeteers, and the way we do it is we do it by show. Uh, we really don't have salary puppeteers. We wish we did, but but what we do is we say, hey, we're doing this show, and would you like to come and learn puppetry and perform with us? So we're always looking for puppeteers. So if you're interested please contact us because we would love to have you and we'll train you to operate the puppet and use your voice and everything that you need to know. You don't have to have any experience at all. And you also have workshops for making puppets, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We do uh, puppet making workshops. Uh, we do puppet karaoke, which is a lot of fun. Pick a puppet and your favorite song, and the puppet sings it for you. Um, I kind of like Rob Zombie myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's so much fun. Puppets are infectious. They are. So zombieism. Right, that's right. <laughs> and we don't even bite you. You get infected. You just put, put us on. Good to know. Although your your feet, uh, your teeth are uh, felt, so I'm not sure a bite would do much harm. Yeah, they're foam, but you know, oh. it's, the, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Zombies tend to not see the dentist quite as often, huh? Right. How many puppets? Bird brains appeal to me, because, you know, and I don't mean like people bird brains, like real bird brains. Right. Right. Um. How many puppets would you say there are in in Puppets in the City's studios? Um, there's probably over 150 different puppets because Tony likes to make them. Good. It's like you can't control it, though. Are there um, puppets you're just like really dying to use in some, some performance that you haven't had a chance to yet? Well, not necessarily. There's, there are new shows coming up um, that that are being created, but we have, oh uh, gosh, I don't know, like 15 different shows that we want, we, we love to do, and I think we're going to try and put more of them online so that people can see them because they're a lot of fun, you know. And they the puppets are we're all just like, hey, remember me? I was in that fun show. Me again. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna work. We're working on it. Get those shows out there. Are there anything uh, currently booked that you would like to plug where people can come see you? Oh yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Let's let's go way far out into October. We will be at Redview Gardens for Botanical, the twentieth through the thirtieth in the evenings, and it's so much fun because you wander through the garden. And we're all over the place. So we, and we can talk to you and you can talk to us. It's really fun. Um, let's see what else. We do have, we're going to have a film in this year's Fringe Festival. Uh, it's called The Muse. And uh, it stars Edgar Allan Poe and a very saucy raven. <laughs> it's funny. You'll like it. Um, what else? I, there, there are... Uh, workshops here and there. I let's see. There's one in July at, in Orem at the uh, theater there. We'll put it up on our website, of course, and you can see 
So that's for kids, and it's a week long workshop in the morning to make puppets and stuff. Very cool. And I'll put your website down there so people can find you. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's something predictable like puppets in the city dot org or something, right? Org, that's the one. Hey, yep, I guess. www.puppetsinthecity.org. That's us. Excellent. Um, I think that does it for us, um, and I do encourage you to find them, look them out, join, come to a workshop, come to a show, uh, be a weirdo, have fun, be silly. Uh, any, uh, any, any, a hundred percent weirdo. Yeah. Any, any parting words for, for our, for our friends? Everybody, everybody, yeah. And yeah, don't be afraid to be a little different. If you want to dance to the music in the supermarket, you go for it. Good. And if the people don't like it, they can go in a different aisle. Or they might join you. Sometimes people join you. It's even more awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Shelby and Zombie Cat from Puppets in the City. This has been another episode of Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. And uh, we'll see you again. Okay, right, thanks, Gix. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless you all. God save the king. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. My arms. <laughs> this is... Snap out of it. Oh. No. What? No, no, no. No, I hit you this way. You, no, you turn your head. Turn. There. No. no. This is... <laughs> like that. This is the basics of stage combat, man. Hit you this way. Okay. Bam. Oh, but that's away yeah. from the screen. You see, hit me with your other hand so I face no, the I'll, screen. I'll oh, just backhand. Ba I'll backhand. Bam. <laughs> again, again. You jerk! I never yet. <laughs> Good. Your turn. I'm ready. What? <laughs> Like that? No! <laughs> Slap! Not... Not... Hey! <laughs> Slap! Um. Three, two, okay. you son of a biscuit! Oh, I didn't do it right. Okay, one more time. That's my purse! <laughs> was that good? Was that good? Slow motion, slow motion. I don't know you! No!